How deep is your love? Hello, welcome to How Deep Is Your Love. And what are we loving this week, Nathan? Cardamom. Or is it cardamom? <laughs> or is it cardamom? Or cardomom? Cardamom? Nobody quite knows how to spell it. But that's not the important thing. Unless, of course, you're on countdown. But they'll put you right. Trust me. They're good people. I love cardamom. Cardamom is, I would say... You can't have degrees of uniqueness, can you? It's kind of binary. I would say cardamom is unique in the world of spices. It doesn't have the ubiquitous application of a cumin, for example, or a, a bay leaf, or, or something like that, peppercorns. It's not like that. It, it has quite specific uses because it's so perfumed and so delicious. But where it really flexes its muscles is... It has a really wide use outside of solely the curry cooking arena. Um, the best way to think of cardamom, I think, is to think of it as the vanilla of brown people's world. So it's two parts. It's got the husk. Now, I should make it clear at this point, there are two types of cardamom. There's the black cardamom, which is the big thing that looks... I swear to God, it looks like a fucking spider in your curry sometimes. It does. I'm not joking. And I have freaked out. When I've seen a big black cardamom in a big hearty mutton curry or, or some such thing. That's one thing. Um, and I'll tell you a funny story about cardamom. Uh, there is a green cardamom, which is so perfumed. It's all top notes. It's top notes and it's deliciousness. And it's what again, it's kind of alchemy. Because when you cook it, you know the cardamom flavour. But you can't put your finger on exactly what it is. Ground cardamom is used in a lot of Middle Eastern desserts and dishes and stuff like on bakla- baklava and things, or in um, you know kind of any any sweet sweet set thing in the Middle East has can have a touch of kind of powdered cardamom in it. Cardamom is used in our house growing up. Cardamom was used in tea, cardamom chai. You know we just call that chai, obviously. Um, and you can have the chai that's got kind of a, a, a multi multitude of different spices in it, but the, the kind of the clean perfume of crushed cardamom in the water with the tea bags, boiled milk and sugar, it's delicious because again you get that lovely zinging top note of perfume, and with a husk in there as well. People make the mistake of throwing the husk away, but what the husk does it it does particularly in the creation of chai, give you a kind of a basey kind of uh, what's the word I'm looking for it gives you ballast in the tea experience that's right listener I've just used the word ballast when referring to a cup of spiced tea Um, now how else do I uh, oh also cardamom in coffee have you had cardamom coffee Nathan so if you so if when you so for those that don't know it's like a little green it's not it's green when it's fresh as it dries as most cardamom is uh, in the West at any rate. And actually in most Indian houses in India, it dries out and it kind of loses that intense green flavour. So from a sage green, it's kicked right back into kind of a very, very soft, very subtle green, faded green. Um, And the husk is very husky. So you break that open um, and what will... What my gran used to do when she used to make tea, she's my gran, it was all blood related relatives in the house, so you could find with this. When she was making the tea, she'd crack it between her, her molars and then put that into the tea because that would then release what's inside. And what's inside is the magic. Um, or as Jennifer Aniston would say, here's the science bit. What I've done is I've done that thing with my fingers clicking and moving my head side to side like an African American woman, for whom I have a greatest respect. Those seeds inside, those little black seeds, punch such a flavour. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I, I can say I love them in coffee. Put them in your coffee grinder. Don't put the green husks in. I've made that mistake before. But if you grind, grind your own beans, chuck them in. Even if you don't grind your own beans, put the seeds in the bottom of your cafetiere or in your espresso maker. It's not quite the same intensity of flavour, but it is it's an excellent digestif. Because that's the other thing about cardamom. If you've ever been to India... You see, like, folk walking about chewing cardamom after a meal. Not only does it breath, breath freshen, 
it also just helps kind of just digest food and all the rest of it. Do you do that, Nathan? Do you? Yeah, just what? I, in I, Meadow I, Bank? <laughs> wandering around Edinburgh? Oh, I don't wander around the streets. Spitting cardamom out <laughs> into the, to the road like they do in Delhi. But after I've made pilau rice and there'll be cardamom in the pilau rice. Yes. Although it's very different, isn't it, when you chew it after it's been cooked? Yeah. It's like garlic, you know, boiled garlic? Mm. It's got that flavour, but it's dissipated. It's, it's got a width to it. That... um. And, and not that sharpness. And pilau rice, funnily enough, is the next thing we're going to talk about. Because cardamom and pilau rice. See, I remember growing up, and my mum would make pilau rice. And she would use the pilau rice, which is so much flavour. And she'd use green cardamom, black cardamom, cinnamon, long. What do you call long in English? Uh, cloves. All this flavour. And this kind of this light beige colour imparted to the white rice. The rice would be so delicious. And you'd have a little bit of the curry left over from the night before. Um, we never thought anything of it. Which, I mean, it just meant you didn't eat it by meat that day. You could save a bit of money in the household expenses. But pilau rice is delicious with cardamom. I also use cardamom a lot in desserts. So I think I mentioned... I think I mentioned Eastern Mess will be doing um, a pudding special um, in the next few months. I think we, you know, it'll be daft not to. It's such a, an interesting thing to talk about. So we talk about Indian sweets. Um, we'll probably do an Indian sweets podcast every quarter because there's just so much to go through. Um, and so with Eastern Mess, you've got the meringues, you've got the double cream with the icing sugar through it, mango, passion fruit with a preferred tropical fruit Kathleen um, wanted to use and she was so right. Black pepper um, was how we finished it. But also I put cardamom seeds through the double cream because you get again just those little as you get those little cracks i'll be honest with you right i think it was one flavor too many i would i would take out i'd maybe take out the passion fruit because you've got that little explosion of those seeds anyway mm. uh, and i'd maybe use actually i think raspberries and 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 mangoes are a lovely combination also now here's an interesting thing so i garnish all my dishes with black pepper Black pepper for me. What did you have the other night that you really loved with black pepper in it? What was that again? What did we have? You had a pudding the other night. Oh, strawberries and balsamic. With black pepper. Yeah. Now, you'll know this, and many of you, lovely listener, will know this. So, Ian Pace, who was the drummer for Deep Purple, Mark 1, 2, and 3. And 4, actually. He was with Deep Purple all the way through all the different lineups. Ian Pace, one of the best drummers, rock drummers, in the history of rock drumming spoke very articulately about drumming and he said you know you've got you've got to start quiet because if you don't start quiet how can you get loud yeah so if you think about art in that in that way if if you've got something savory it then extends the reach of the sweet yeah the distance between that peppery perfume of pepper and cardamom and the sweet of the sugar and the mango and the raspberry is a beautiful thing so yeah cardamom in desserts i mean i know i said at the beginning that cardamom isn't like the other spices in that it's it's not used massively in savory food but the more i think about it the more i talk about it the more i says it's used that awful lot and really it's you're, you're limited by the ambit of your aspiration let's use that phrase because it's a favorite of mine um I also use cardamoms probably. I do one dish, and this will be the cook along dish this week. It's a cardamom chicken, a cardamom chicken curry. And the reason it's a really good thing to do quite relatively early in our kind of podcast and cook along experience is it's very similar to a regular chicken curry, which I think everyone should have in their arsenal. You should always be able to cook a chicken curry because if you can cook a chicken curry, you can cook any curry. You know, that's your your entry level. Uh, what a cardamom does. Now, here's an important point, and we'll talk about this more during the cook-along. I'm not going to be cooking white meat. I'm not going to be cooking breast with you, okay? And particularly when you add something as potent and pokey as cardamom. Something that's... So, okay, so if you think of sage as a drunk uncle on Christmas Day, Right? Think about cardamom as that really erudite relative that makes everyone feel a little bit less intelligent. 
That's what cardamom is. It's not bossing you around the place. It's just by some of your presence letting you know that there's a better life for you to lead. Um, so when you add cardamom to a chicken curry, it's it needs the robustness of that of the, of the brown meat, the gray, and, and 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 the gray meat to to work. So it needs the thighs, that juiciness, that extra bit of fat, just to work against it, just to to push against it. Not cut. We're not looking for a cut here. We're looking for a scrum down is what we're looking for, not an incisive run from the backs. If you don't know anything about rugby, you work that one out yourselves. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So for that, it's your basic aromatics. You know, your um, your temporary role with cumin, but less than normal, because we want the cumin to bring a different job for us this time. We want the cumin to, rather than give us uh, the foundation of the spicing, we want the cumin to give us the four corners. Yeah. Uh, of the found of the foundation, we will fill the rest out with cardamom, and we use cardamom three different ways in this dish. So the cardamom pods go in, crushed, lightly crushed, so you get that the the the, the husk flavour and the sweet perfume. Uh, we fry that off with the aromatics. Our, her, our our other spices come in, and amongst other spices, we have some cardamom seeds that we've lightly toasted separately. Nobody else has done this. This is something I've invented. And I'm quite pleased about it, isn't it? You can tell from the tone of my voice. In they pop. Uh, and then you do... A, and then, you you know, chicken goes in. You brown your chicken. And before you add your liquid, um, you put some ground cardamom in. Just a tiny bit. Very intense. And that just... Again, you've got three different layers of cardamom. It's interesting. When I, I did um, the cook along of all things with uh, Gordon uh, Ramsay, my own mucker... Mr. Ramsey, um, what's such a laugh doing that? The bits they can show you on telly were the bits you want to watch. We had such a scream doing that. Um, I remember his producer saying it's the only time Gordon's been left speechless. Um, unfortunately, you can't see the reasons why. <laughs> it's very rude. Um, so I did a cock here with Gordon, and I had three different... Yes, Nathan, we can all laugh at the use of the word cock. It's a perfectly acceptable Scottish soup. Do you know why it's, co- why, do you know why it's called cock leaky because you use an old cockerel for it. Because you'd cook it for hours. Because, you know, cockerels are tough. My pal Sam, actually, Sam and Jackie, dear, dear friends of mine who I was staying with recently, um, they have hens. So the eggs in the kitchen are theirs. So I brought them back up from uh, Stockport. They uh, keep hens. Um, lovely family. The most beautiful family. And they'd cooked one of the cockerels and they were complaining that it had been very tough. Um, and I said, did you cook it for long? And they said, well, we did cook it for a couple of hours. I'm like, and Jackie knows what she's doing, and Sam's a really good cook. You know, but even so, you need to cook it for a long time. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. Layers of leeks is what I did in that dish. I did base leeks, roasted leeks, and then leeks just on the finish. So that's sort of what we're doing with the cardamom and the cardamom chicken. Um, oh, there's another thing as well, which we will we'll talk about at some, uh, at some point, which is a cardamom spiced butter uh, that you can finish your naan breads with which is a lovely, very subtle, again, a very subtle way of doing it. So that's the cook-along um, this week. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, uh, cardamom, cardamom in the the alcohol world. Because one of my most famous cocktails, I do about five, six cocktails, um, and my most famous is probably the cardamom martini. Uh, and I mentioned the black pepper martini. Uh, and with the cardamom martini, it's the same principle. You just cut the cardamoms down, loads of them you get this beautiful stock syrup cardamom flavoured stock syrup it's out of this world and then use that as your kind of stock syrup for any cocktails in this case it would be a, a martini um, but regular followers will know I have a, I've had an obsession with craft beer for many years in fact my restaurant in Edinburgh V Deep was a craft beer and curry house and we brewed our own beer, so uh, which was a Vinda Brew, which was a cardamom IPA. And I'm actually getting back to brewing beer. And there'll be something at some point quite soon we'll be doing a collaboration with Hidden Lane Brewery in Glasgow. Uh, lovely, lovely people who are brewing fantastic beer. They're, they do a beautiful tropical beer. They do an old uh, uh, 80 shilling, like an old pint of heavy as we used to call it in Glasgow. Really lovely people, really delicious beer. Um, I was meant to be doing a beer with them before lockdown. So we'll maybe do the, the vendor brew with them and we'll maybe see if we can't we might be able to sell that online, Nathan, mightn't we? And um, I think the uh, half the profits from that will go towards homelessness or something. We'll do something meaningful 
with that. So that is your cardamom. Any questions, Nathan? Not for me. Not from you. Um, there's a competition just for fun, but I want uh, I want you to to message us and email us across all any of the platforms. Obviously, you've got the there's a Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and lovely Patreon. I and we're going to do this. I'm going to post a picture of this. He doesn't know we're going to do this yet. I am going to find out how many cardamom pods I can lodge in one of his dimples. <laughs> you look at his little gorgeous face. Um, thank you very much. Food is? Love. Love is? Food. Food love is? Life. Have a lovely week and I'll see you for the cook along on Friday. <laughs> <laughs>